call, calling this meeting of the Tacoma School Board study session to order on Thursday, April 21st, 2022. Um, will everyone please stand for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Tacoma Public Schools acknowledges that we are on the traditional, ancestral, and historical lands of the Puyallup Tribe of Indians. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the Puyallup Tribe. This acknowledgement serves as a first step in honoring our nearest tribal neighbors and partners who have inhabited this region since time immemorial and to whom we give thanks for allowing us passage to their lands. We shall intentionally create inclusive and respectful partnerships that honor indigenous cultures, histories, identities, and the socio-political realities. Thank you. All right, item 4.0, study session items 4.1, equity framework update. And I will turn it over to our superintendent on special assignment, Carla Santorno, to um, brief us on her work this year. Um, I'm real excited to be here. I think this might be my swan song for study sessions. <laughs> so I am, can you tell? I am so ready, right? Okay, <laughs> nothing can go wrong. I've got incredible people with me, and uh, these guys have worked really hard. So what we really want to do for you tonight is provide you an update about the work that's been going on. And it's really just, uh, is a span of uh, from like 2018, mm -hmm. the work that this team has been doing to really uh, uh, approach, analyze, structure equity in the district. So I'm excited to ha have you here uh, where they are today. Um, as all of you know, the work that you do with equity, it's uh, mm -hmm. comprehensive, it's multifaceted, it has lots of definitions, it's complex. And um, the one thing I wanted to make clear is that these guys have all kind of committed to a facet or a theme of equity work, but it's not the only thing they're doing. They're doing equity, and my guess is that most of the staff that's here in the, uh, here in the audience, equity is a part of their everyday work that they do, and they're always considering it. So I don't want you to think that, that, that that's all they do. I know that uh, Justina, works on an avid curriculum that's all about, you know, bringing kids uh, to the table. Um, Zeke is working on curriculum instruction and making sure that we have curriculum that uh, goes with students. Everybody here and their department is working on bringing equity to the district. So, uh, and these de the design team members, Tammy, Josh, uh, Pat was gonna come, was not able to make it. They're doing this work in schools too. So um, it's really, uh, exciting and I can't tell you how many people call and say what are you doing how are you doing it what does it look like and it's interesting because it's really hard for me to say here's the formula for what you do we can't do that because it's not a formula you know it's about the heart and the passion and the interest in the work so we're excited so tonight we want to review the purpose um, and take a look at our why and then update you on the steps that we've taken so far, what's gone on, and then also talk about next steps. So next slide, uh, Mark, I don't know if Mark, Mark, go to the next one. This is a good overview of the why. Uh, in September 2018, it was really obvious that there, were lo there was lots of good equity go work going on in the district. And that as you went through schools and you went to the departments, you could see that there was a variety of different things happening. But the thing there wasn't is there wasn't consistency around the district. There wasn't, you know, a uh, theme of this is what we want to do and this is what it looks like. And some people were drinking the Kool-Aid and really had it and were really working. And others, um, either they didn't know how or they had good intention, but they just didn't know how to finish it. So my goal was that we get this design team together and that they would really help look at, we look at all the gaps, look at who wasn't doing anything. And it wasn't a stick, you know, it wasn't a stick thing. It wasn't like we're gonna beat you until you get it done. It was like, let's figure out what the gaps are and what's keeping people from moving forward and let's um, address these inequities. And so this team, uh, really made data different driven decisions, which I mean, they looked at data to find out, you know, um, in, from several different aspects to see, you know, what professional development was going on, who's attending, as you can imagine, 
Um, we have some superstars in classrooms that are doing equity every day. And if there's a workshop, they're there. They're doing it and they're learning more. And we have people that are giving workshops. And then we have, um, you know, other people that are well-intentioned and really want to do the work. It's just that, um, you know, they haven't, they haven't had that mechanism to say thou shalt. And that's really what I wanted to add was a thou shalt. You know, that this isn't optional, that you have to do this work. And if you're going to get better at meeting the needs of students, and if we're going to have a systemic district, a district that has, uh, that systemically approaches the elimination of discrimination, then we have to work in a very intentional way. And so that's what uh, this team really came today to, uh, to talk about. Um, so we started in 2018 when uh, they got together and just started looking at the data and looking and finding out what was going on. And this design team kind of just came together and met, you know, as they could. And the first thing that they really did is to say, let's get three modules. And this was for teachers. Let's get three modules that every teacher has to do and that principals have to know how to deliver and that they use that for professional development. And it was so interesting because um, it started, we implemented in 2019. Then 2020, COVID hit. But what was so, uh, what I was so proud of is that everybody was saying, oh my God, we have to do something about equity now, you know, because we've got, and, and, and other districts. But in Tacoma, we had already started. We were already doing the work. We already had the modules. People were calling and saying, we'd like to look at your modules and what it looks like. We've gotten calls from University of Washington, University of Chicago, people all over the country saying, we'd like to look at your modules. So I felt good that we had already started that. We had um, volunteers that uh, came together and decided to work. Um, I'd, I'd say in the, the in, so that takes us up to like 2019, we did the first modules, 2020. Um, we, and in 2020, we kind of said, we need more detail in the modules. It's not uh, detailed enough. We need to give people more structure. So we had another team that came together and really worked on that. And again, really focusing on staff professional development and ways for principals to get into the classroom and, and show evidence of that, uh, of that uh, professional development in their classrooms. So then, um, oh, uh, some of the other things that happened in 1920 is they developed those part two of the modules. They created a culturally responsive teaching video library. Uh, they provided supports to building leaders to try to work this. Uh, Justina started getting a group of action teachers together that were going to be kind of like the superstars of knowing this work so that they could talk to teachers. Josh did a lot. Josh Darling did a lot of work with uh, his colleagues, his principal colleagues that voluntarily came and said, hey, help show us how to do this. So uh, again, a lot more detailed work. Then in, 2020, uh, in this year, what we decided was that what we needed to do was really get tight about the work that we wanted to finish. And so um, when you look at this group of uh, deliverables, you'll say, well, that doesn't touch every single thing that we have to do. You're right, it doesn't. It wasn't about touching every single thing. It was about being deliberate and intentional about work that would make a difference. So that's what you'll see these guys talk about at Sunrise. And uh, most of, of, almost everybody in the audience, it was a part of one of those teams. And we asked them to sign a compact. We were gonna deliver, we were gonna get this done, we were gonna meet on a regular basis, and uh, you know, we we're gonna hit a timeline and really try to make sure that we got all of this done. It's been pretty exciting right, this, to watch this group work. Uh, the next slide, Mark. This is the group, can't really read that, but this is the group of team members that came together. And, you know, we really told folks that if you, if you couldn't do it, that was okay. That you did, you know, sometimes you get on a committee because you feel like you need to or you have to or it would look good if you were on it. But this was about, we said, hey, you know, if, uh, if you're starting something in your school this year or you're doing something else, don't sign up for this because we really want people that are going to come, stick with it, and, uh, you know, really finish it up. So this is the group that really came. You'll see Marie Verhar was up there. Marie uh, has come in this year and helped us do some work because she was good at it. Um, and then the other thing we got, moment of silence, is a project manager. <laughs> <laughs> and so Kelly, I want you to meet Kelly, photographer. 
yes, for talk, our uh, project mon manager. And Kelly's the one, usually the project, my, in my experience, the project manager is the one you'd love to hate because, you know, they're always on your back telling you what you have to do next. But let me tell you, it's Kelly true. is the nicest project manager I have ever met. And she has a good way of just inspiring you uh, to do the next thing. And she gave us a tool that helped us figure, you know, keep track of where we were going. And it was an easy way for me to look and say, okay, this is where everybody is. And, you know, the other thing that's good about her role is she helps us with, um, you know, talking about whether or not we need more resources or more time or we need to expand it. So she's been helpful. I asked Kelly to come just number one so you could meet her and see her in her presence. And um, secondly, for her just to give you a little taste of what the tool looked like. Yeah. Um, so can you pull up the smart sheet, please? So I'm Kelly Furtado, not related to Nelly Furtado. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hear that a lot. Um, so. My role in this is really supporting the work that everybody is doing and making sure it is visible and centralized because there is so much, so many moving pieces and a lot of the work being done overlaps across teams and then it's expansive across the district. So in this tool, each team has a section and I'm not going to go detail by detail, but um, you'll see that there are tasks assigned, due dates, and then on the, which you can't see right now, on the left side of the screen, there's project health. So we can track what's on track, what's coming up, um, what we're currently working on. Blue is future. So this is kind of a snapshot of where we're at, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. So at any time, all the team members have access to this, and the teams actively work in it when they're doing their team meetings. And then when Carla or Marie or anybody else goes to a larger meeting, they can pull this up and quickly reference. But this will also help with data collection. And then as the project moves forward throughout the years, we can see where we started and where we've gone, how decisions were made. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll make sure I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions kind of towards the end. Uh, we, you know, we're trying to keep it uh, the time that we needed really needed more than 45 minutes, but we decided we could make this work. And so on the next slide um, is the actual project. So these are the deliverables that we wanted to do this year. So uh, I'm not going to go through each one of them. I'm going to let, uh, so each, each team probably has like five to six folks on their team that helped them work it. And they decided for tonight to have one team lead that would tell you what it looked like. So they'll describe what the facets of equity they were working on in their project, and then talk to you about where they are and their, uh, what, you know, some uh, some timelines are going to be longer than the end of this spring, and uh, then some will be, um, will will finish before the year. So we're, I'm going to ask them to take take us through each one, five to six minutes each, guys. <laughs> See, you're up. All right, so my rock star team, uh, Forrest and Amanda and Aaron, uh, we have the operations classified staff uh, piece. And uh, our original conversations really started with thinking about that group in particular and the span, right? You got transportation, custodial maintenance, food services, uh, office folks, right? And what does it look like? We have provided all of our teachers a laptop. We all report to a school building. We've got a classroom we work in. Uh, and for a lot of these staff, there there's four of them, five of them sharing a space. Um, the access to technology looks different. It's a very diverse group of employees with different languages, different educational experiences. Uh, they work sun up to sun. You know, when you look at our night custodial staff, our food services are first in the building often. Uh, how do we? reach all of them. Um, and so the team backed up and looked at what are the key pieces we wanted to start with and how do we think of this as a progression. And so part of that progression is knowing that they do hold meetings together and we start with some kind of face-to-face -face interaction. This is a human reality of how do we uh, work to be anti-racist? How do we work to uh, in, be inclusive? Uh, what does it look like when I interact staff to staff, staff to student or in the workplace? 
Uh, and so then we started looking at what other platforms do we already have? So I know uh, in conversations with Andrea Frazier, she was able to answer all 9,000 of our questions and they use safe schools. We all do safe schools training in Tacoma. It's a mandatory piece for us. Uh, a lot of it is around safety and procedures and things like that to start, but there are equity trainings in there. Cabinet had a chance to review three of those uh, and kind of vet. We also found out, again, one of our thousands of questions for Andrea, could we customize, right? What example do we provide for bus drivers that might be different than maintenance and custodial staff so it's relevant to them, but still hits our main messages? So referencing back to our equity framework, the work we've already done in the district, policy, uh, anchored in those five principles, awareness, attitude, analysis, actions, and accountability. Uh, we have the flexibility to tweak the safe schools trainings to meet. A lot of them are in that 20 to 30 minute per lesson. Uh, we've looked at different ways as far as how do we bring them together. So when we think about bus drivers, we know they do kind of their morning and afternoon shift. Uh, Aaron, uh, one of our team members, talked about maybe that's a perfect place to bring them into the school, right? We don't often bring the driver into the building, but what if we, by region, said, all right, after your first set of routes in the morning, we're going to bring you in uh, to our uh, conference room or our lunch room or our library and give a chance not only for that face-to-face, -face, but to do some of the training online, uh, give us a chance to hear their voice and experiences in return and let them see school, right? We were able to do some walkthroughs today. It just feels different when you're in the building. So uh, an inclusive way of kind of bringing the training to life uh, and bringing them into our community. From there, we just looked at, again, on a progression level, um, part of that safe schools is you do the class, you do your little assessment at the end. Uh, we have access to that data to help us then pinpoint how do we get more specific each time we go forward and make this ongoing. Other than that, was a piece of cake. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Sure. Zeke, um, so you've already started this, or are you still just, have you tweaked one yet? Have, have, has anybody done this training, or have you tweaked it to? Right, so we've participated in the trainings that are already Existing. provided, right, and started looking at, like, one of them has a custodial example with okay. a little video and things like that, and thought about, all right, so do we do a like what would that look like right. if we were doing it for each of the other groups, okay. right? So that if I'm food services, I have an example more relevant for right, what right, right. that encounter. So, so have we started implementing this even in just the module that Safe Schools has that doesn't isn't specific to with photos or examples, or are, are we still in the planning? Definitely in the planning. Right. Yep. yep. I just wanted to yep. get clear on that. Thank you. And Ken, just recently, I ask uh, I ask Andrea to come tonight. You want to, you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say I've been working with um, maintenance. Do you want to do you want to come up so that it's it's for the uh, the audience that's virtual. Too. Yeah. You, you might want to introduce yourself for the public. Hello, I'm Andrea Frazier, Coordinator of Professional Development here in Tacoma Schools. Um, to answer that question, we have started to work with some of the facilities and operations staff along with some of our nutritional services. So what we did is took a small pilot group to have them kind of go through the videos and we were awaiting feedback to see how we could make it more relevant to them. So um, the other thing is some of our paraeducators, oh, excuse me, educational support professionals <laughs> Good job. have um, also started taking some of the videos along with doing the videos that our team set up um, that the teachers in, engaged in. Uh, about 200 of our educational support professionals went through those. So we have started kind of rolling them out and then the plan would be next year um, making that decision if we're going to customize the videos or keep as is and then we can roll it out to all classified staff. Okay. Thank you. We'd ask um, Andrea to kind of work with, yeah, Zeke in, has ended up with a lion's share of some of the, the teamwork because he's still got to do the curriculum, you know, inculcation <laughs> yes, and he's he got to do um, social <laughs> studies and all that. So I asked Andrea, I said, uh, would you mind, you know, coming into this team and taking a, because she understands, um, you know, the work, she has got a relationship with a lot of the, the classified personnel. And when you're doing this, uh, this uh, professional development with our classified staff, it's about relationships. It's about building that relationship and really letting them know. So um, all of the, all of the heads, uh, 
Tom Chalk and Paul Harris and Ray, all those guys have really worked closely with Andrea before, so we're real excited about having her come in and, and do a part of it. And, you know, a lot of our, um, a lot of our misunderstandings about equity or uh, racist remarks or whatever come from, and I'm not saying more than anybody else, but because we haven't done this professional development with our classified folks, that it's easy, an easy place for things to happen and for people to, uh, you know, feel like they're being discriminated against. So it's way past time, and I'm real excited yep. about the work they're doing. Okay. Thanks, okay. Andrew. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So one of the <coughs> other uh, one of the other things we wanted to get at is because if you think about it, so we're starting to do all this work, we're moving the needle, and we're trying to get our employees, you know, on board and understand. But every year we get new employees. <laughs> and so there's got to be a way to onboard people that are coming in and new. And that is a huge, you know, that, that's a huge challenge no matter what kind of thing you do. So Tammy yeah. and her team took that on about new certificated professional yes, development. We did. And you have, a, you have a sheet for each one of these projects that kind of gives you an overview of uh, what they're working on. So if it's inside your folder on your right hand side, there's a, there's a, design team uh, summary for each one. That's great. So now I don't have to read the whole thing, right? <laughs> I, don't I don't want to. So yeah, so we had all our certificated teachers and administrators go through those initial modules that Carla mentioned um, in the year 1920. But then what do we do about all the new staff that are hired each and every year? And then another challenge barrier to that is a lot of our new staff are hired in August by August but many of our staff are not right so there are teachers hired all throughout the year so um, I'd like to acknowledge the rest of my team that's working with we are working together on this and so that includes Katrina Tuggle assistant principal at Essen Elementary Ronell Balabat principal at Bernie Elementary and Shavonda Simmons who's a CTE teacher at Mount Tahoma High School. So we've been working together since January to really think about um, how we would want to create accessible, chunkable learning for new teachers to be ready to meet the diverse needs of the students that are in their classrooms at new teachers. So we are in the process of developing three 90-minute modules that are specifically topicked around first yourself and your identity right just knowing who you are knowing what your biases are how our own biases impact students and those that we work with so that will be the first module followed by just overall historical content around racism and um, educational systems that are grounded in racism so that's the second module and then third up um, module is about application, those culturally responsive teaching practices that we want to see happening in every classroom. So we've been working on those since February or since January. We're on the process right now, March and April, of really um, refining them, getting feedback. Um, making sure it's the right content, it's the right activities. Each module can, um, includes a self-assessment for them to do some self-assessing about what they know about their self, what they know about the historical um, aspects of race, um, equity, and racism, and then just what they know about culturally responsive teaching practices. So they'll do some self-assessment, they'll watch some videos, they'll do some readings, there'll be some interactive activities and reflections in each module. We are fortunate in Tacoma Public Schools to have best funding to offer a new teacher induction academy in August. And so the plan right now, while we have these continuous funds, how continuous they will be year after year, I'm unsure. But right now we know we have them. And so we can ensure that new teachers hired by August will receive this training with these modules at that induction academy part as well as when they're learning new curriculum and how to navigate Tacoma and how to access optional pay they will also get this training that being said as I mentioned we also know we have lots of staff that aren't 
hired or on board necessarily by August 15th when this induction academy happens. So we also know we need a different avenue to make sure that all teachers, regardless of when they are hired, have access to this learning. So we are creating some virtual webinar type of um, opportunities for them to get the same um, learning throughout the school year, regardless of when they are hired. We know we need to put some systems in place to track that. Who's gonna track that? Is it gonna be the principal? Is it gonna be human resources? Um, so we are still in the process of figuring some of those questions and systems out, but we know those things have to take place. Um, we also, because of our best grant, have the opportunity to meet with all of our new teachers throughout the year. Um, once a month and so how can we also keep going back to this learning so it's just not one and done learning and also we also know we've learned a lot over the past two years about virtual learning and there's lots of great learning that can happen but really some of the best learning happens in discussion and reflection with others and so you know even though we might have to have some folks do this virtual webinar based, we still want them to be having discussions and interactions about the learning that happens. Um, so our goal is to be ready to roll out these modules at our August 2022 um, Induction Academy for the first time. So we are on track based on our little <laughs> smart sheet that Kelly has held us to. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a to-do, yes. check-off-the-box kind of person, so um, we, we're on track. Thanks, Tammy. Yes. It's been good work. Um, the, the next deliverable has really been um, some of the, the meat of what we've been doing with our teachers. And um, Rita, I'm sure, will talk about it. We've had some regular, some state um, guidelines. Guidelines. I was going to say Standards. mandates. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, about what we have to do. Yeah. And so this group has really been responsible for taking a look at what we have in place and what we don't have in place and making sure we mesh them to take care of them. Rita? Hi, so I want to begin with first acknowledging the team. You'll all have this one pager and you know you can mm -hmm. look back at the details. But the team is Justina Johnson, who is absolutely amazing, and brings so much to the table. We have Laura Allen. Laura Allen brings a wealth of expertise, knowledge, um, ideas. We have Lauren Taylor, principal at Manitou Park, and then me. And uh, we call ourselves the CREED Committee. And the <laughs> CREED is an acronym. And let me tell you what the, the real name is. It's Culturally Responsive Education Expectations for District-Wide Leadership and Responsibility. Um, our audience is our district and building level administrators and certificated staff. So why did we put this together? Um, our purpose was very clear. We want to make sure that, uh, well, first of all, this is not a framework, it's a guide. Um, it's a 33-page document, it's a living document. We tab it, go back, we get input from special ed, from Title I, from LAP, from all the departments, ELL, um, and we go back and review it. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about what it is, but what's our guide, our, uh, uh, what's our why? Our why is to support, guide, and direct. The, our audience, which is building and uh, um, um, district level uh, administrators as well as certificated uh, teachers, so that they have the expectations and the resources in one place. And for anybody who wants to click and go back and look at it again, it's right there for them. Expectations are clear, all the resources are in one uh, place for them. Our other purpose is to support and guide all these stakeholders to close that awareness and action gap. Yes, I'm aware, but is it transforming into my actions? Because all the examples are over here. So to go back to this, this document has three big sections. Section one is called building relational, relational capacity. That's the front, uh, or, I mean, it's the foundation. It's how you uh, welcome kids into the classroom. It's how you set those relationships to say, I respect you, I love you, I want you to be here, and you and I are going to be in this learning relationship. The second section is instruction, and the third section is assessment. So there's a nice thread through all those three. 
then it gets a little bit more complicated. But again, it's making sure that each one of our stakeholders has that awareness so that they can translate it into action. It's broken up into four sections uh, horizontally. First section is component and expectations. And pretty much very clearly they state what the component is. This is about building relationships. This is about teaching to the standards. I, I, and that's what's in each one of those sections. The second component talks about implementation, action steps, and strategies. It's so transparent, it's so clear. And all those examples are just given over there. How do you implement? What are the strategies? What are the action steps that you take? The third section says follow through what it looks like. So again, in that spirit of being transparent, write their explicit examples. There's no reason for anybody to then not be, you know, like, what does this look like? What does this feel like? I'm not sure. Is this right? Is this best practices? It's right out there and clearly stated. And then the fourth one, which is, again, critical in my opinion, are dimensions and criteria alignment. This is what Carla was talking about. It has already been aligned to all the state, OSPI, uh, guidelines, so um, CCDEI standards, mm -hmm. the cultural competency standards by PESB, our self ID standards. So that stops anybody from saying, are they aligned? Do I have to do this? Does this matter? What does this have to do with my evaluation? All those questions have been taken away because it's right there, right? The last thing that I'm going to say, um, though I should be reviewing these notes, is um, <laughs> all this will be on the hub. So again, in transparency, accessibility, the guidance, the resources, the expectation, absolutely clear. So what are our next steps? We are going to have this done by April 29th. Yep. <laughs> well done, Rita. Very declarative. Very declarative, yep. I fear that when I start talking, I can't stop. <laughs> you did great. You did great. And you can see how complex it is yeah. and, and how the reason why we have to back up and back up. And I don't mean back up. I just mean back it up for our administrators because it's a lot of work. And um, one of the things I think that um, Josh's team is doing is, is talk about how to integrate it. So when you know when the teacher walks into the classroom, she's not thinking, "Oh God, I got to remember to do this, this, this." Instead, that we integrate it into good teaching, and it becomes a part of what you do um, every day. And so I know that this team has done invaluable work in this analysis of here's what the state says we have to do, here's what we're already doing, here's a gap, here's how we fill it. So it's it's been really, I mean, it's too it, it's it, in a way the one pager does it a disservice because because um, it is really critical hard work. Uh, Justina came to cabinet one day and just spent a whole session with us trying to help us understand it because it means that the leadership has to know it well enough to, to impart it to their departments and also follow it up and show the, the um, adaptations for your department and then also to be able to walk into schools and be able to talk to the principals. So. And Josh has been on the team that's been talking about how do you put this in practice? How do you make it practical? How do you help people to see what this work means you do every day? Can I ask a question? Uh-huh. Um, once it is available on the hub, it says district-wide on the hub eventually. Once it is available, that's for all staff? Yes. All right. So my three audiences were building and district leadership mm -hmm. and all certificated staff. Okay. Right. So no, you know, that's that transparency I've been talking about. So Josh, Thank you want to talk about equity practice? Yes, um, you said that perfectly. So um, we had an amazing team. We had uh, Praxia Apostle. Um, we also had Kate Frazier, who are in the audience today. Thank you for being here. Um, we have Minan Haj, and we also had um, Haj, and we also had Patrick Check uh, and myself. Um, our our task, if you will, was to say, all right, how do we take all this and then put it into practice? Um, as uh, Carla said, thou shalt. Mm -hmm. So with high accountability, you also need high level of support. And so what we really focused on was um, a couple different pieces to make sure that happened. The first piece was in collaboration with teaching and learning. We're going to have year-long professional development 
for align with the um, equity framework for all of our administrators, both at the district level as well as building levels, as well as the coaches. If you're expecting people to lead this work, you really have to have a deep understanding of anti-racist practice, culturally relevant, responsible, responsive teaching practices, and equity. So we really want to make sure we focus on the learning piece around that. So that way, you can also hold people accountable, but also call people in. Um, Jamad always is talking about calling people in rather than calling people out. And we really want to call people into this work. And part of that is to make sure that everyone is starting their journey. So we're going to have professional development around this piece. It's going to be connected with our CAP leadership plans because we want to tie it in with the systems that we currently are utilizing um, and making sure that they're also part of the equity framework as part of their leadership plans. Um, everything is going to be tied in. It's going to be tied in with our um, culturally. So when they're doing the um, CAP leadership plans as leaders in the building, they will be able to have conversations with their teacher leaders mm -hmm. and teams of saying, all right, so this is part of your CAP process. These are your action steps. Are your action steps in alignment with culturally relevant and responsive practices? So trying to get more alignment into our current systems um, for accountability with professional development. So that way, the building leaders, as well as district leaders, as well as coaches, can coach to improve that practices to make sure it gets to our students. The, the plan is to have an outline done by June in collaboration with teaching and learning, and then also focus on our implementation for um, August through May of this next year. Uh, we'll monitor and adjust, and as you know, things change as, as you're going along. So uh, we we'll want to make sure that we're um, in alignment with uh, the goals of teaching and learning um, professional development practices. That's one part of it. Um, the second part of it is really focusing uh, to support teachers. Um, this last year, I led professional development on culturally relevant educational practices for pre- and post-observations. So as they went through their, their evaluation with their principals, we talked about what parts of um, your lesson are going to be in alignment with culturally relevant and responsive practices. And we align that with cell 5 d What I found by using that for the full year, as well as the other principals I worked with, is we re really needed more resources for teachers because with high accountability, without a lot of professional development, they were struggling. We had the poster, they're looking, and it was kind of like, all right, let me teach you in the moment. But I also have been doing this work so I could teach them in the moment, but I also had principals reaching out to me saying, hey, we need more, we need more support for our teachers as well as principals so we can move this, this, um, this, this, um, this endeavor. So I'm going to be working with um, teaching and learning to align our work and create um, a website specifically around culturally relevant and responsive practices that tie in with different subjects. So if you're a science teacher, there's going to be resources there for you. If there's ELA teacher, there's resources there for you. We want it to be more holistic. What we found is that if you really get into the work around culturally relevant responsive practices, you will make it will hit all of the different areas of cell 5D. It is not a strategy, but a way of teaching that gets into the work. So you really have to do it as, as a holistic practices. Um, so it is in alignment with the culturally relevant educational pre and post observation tool for accountability with that, that, uh, that support as well. So they will have that, the target audience is teachers, coaches, instructional facilitators, principals, and level directors, and the timeline for completion of the website um, is going to be June of this year. The exciting part about what um, all the teams are doing is uh, that w when it comes to, you know, where the, um, you know, where it hits the road, it's being able to support the teachers so that when they go in the classroom, you know, they know what they're doing. And um, one of the things I've, tr I've done, I'm not finished yet, I swear I will get it done before I leave, is I've tried to visit every single principal. And what I've asked them is, where are you in this journey? Okay, what kind of support do you need? Because I want to be able to use that information uh, to inform our next steps. And uh, Mark, could you put up the next? Oh, I, I forgot to tell about mine. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 yeah. wait. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Um, the, the next one uh, deliverable is the equity commitment statement. And um, 
every, I don't know. Every time I talk about this, I get a little bit embarrassed because I'm thinking people are going to think it's uh, it's a little hokey. But let me tell you, in the districts I've been in, where they really have come to a place where they're all working together, they have a promise or a commitment or a you know they have something, and I just think it works. So if you're trying to tie your bus drivers and your uh, custodians and your uh, professional techs and everybody together to say what is Tacoma about it helps to have something tangible that says this is it so we haven't decided the design team hasn't even seen this yet and poor Nora I said just give me something that I can show them tomorrow night <laughs> and uh, but anyway it, you know just something maybe you can put in your wallet you know that says this is what equity is about and this has some strong statements in it I really like it and uh, the design team may want to change a little bit of it. And I'm real excited about listening to the board and talk about because it all should mesh in together. And we talked a little bit about how, you know, it should be one statement that glues the district together about this is what we want to do. But what I love about this card is that the last the last line of it is how can I use equitable practices practices today? So it's about having every employee every person who gets this card you know our parents are stakeholders that says hey what's my role what do i do it starts with our mission statement it's it st uh, goes next with a statement about we stand for equity we will disrupt institutional biases and inequitable practices so that all students have an equal chance at success and actually uh, what i wrote about this action statement is it's a statement that can be provided to each Tacoma Public School employee that will serve as a reminder of the district's commitment to equity and each employee's need to commit to personal action that supports the district commitment. So that's why I think it's real important. And then it says, uh, in Tacoma Public Schools, equity is dynamic. You know, it's not just sitting there on a shelf saying, uh, we'll get the book out and let's look at it. And then it goes through a set of actions. So we still have to draft it. We still have to work with the board to get it together. We have to work with the equity team. Um, but I'm, I'm more and more convinced that District's Highline has a great uh, promise that they use. And uh, there's been some other districts. And I think it can make a difference. You know, everybody's not going to take it and stick it in their pocket. But it's something that I can be able to go to any employee and say, so you know what our commitment is, right? And expect that they know what our commitment is. So, excellent. Uh, next steps. You heard everybody talked a little bit about their next steps. So what we want to do is uh, complete the action. And you you heard that the deliverables will be different. You know, they have a different timeline based on, you know, what their what their work is. We certainly want to make sure that there is a timeline that people understand that when it says, you know, all modules by teachers have to be completed, and, you know, every single thing that has an accountability to it. And then a measurement to evaluate the effectiveness of it to make sure that happens. And then that we totally all along um, align the compliance that's going on with our, our state uh, creed that we are coming back together and making sure that we're accomplishing that. One of the things I want you to know too is that the you know the, uh, the leadership team, Josh's leadership team, are going through the same work and they're working and talking, learning. We're talking more and more about what's our theory of action and you know how do we take that work and make sure that we're supporting um, departments and principals. We work with Jamad Conley. He's Kenley. Kenley. He's, Kenley. he's come yeah. in and uh, helped us to understand what our work needs to be. Uh, Maria Flores from OSPI came and did some great work with us about, um, you know, how do we how do we make sure that our equity statement is uh, intentional and active, so that it's not just uh, something that's passive. So I think that was great. Uh, the principal visits have been really helpful because they really show, um, you know, where we have gaps and what we need to do, what we need to do. And then I think that our school board has just been so, um, the most thing I'm impressed about is that this thing hasn't died down. We're all working on, you know, coming together and finishing the work. And I think that's real important. Thank you, superintendent and team. This has been really an impressive um, presentation and it's a lot to absorb. I'd like to open it up to questions from board members that might have for the uh, superintendent and special assignment or any of the folks who spoke up. You look like you were going to say something, Josh. If there's a chance, Madam President, I wouldn't mind giving it. You want to little wrap it up there? I just want to uh, let everyone on the team know how grateful we are. Uh, Carla's leadership of the entire team, I think you can see that this is not 
a single program or project. Um, what we have is a very clear roadmap of next steps and how to maintain the momentum. So the equity design team doesn't close and finish. It carries on for the rest of who we are um, because there. Um, we have, Carla reminds all of us that the leadership and the, the wisdom is at the table. And so we have very clear embedded leadership within the staff to take us to the next steps. And so these folks, although some are going to leave us to uh, enjoy retirement, um, we'll find ways to loop them back in. And they are committed and never going to quit. And we've already started to identify well, apparently that. Apparently we saw that, Carla. Yeah, we saw Marie, too. <laughs> um, you know, culture, it was heard, is ever growing, changing, and adapting. And I think that's something that we have to remember always. Um, Director McElroy and I had a conversation, and, and uh, what you may not remember this, but what I remember in that conversation was is that, you know, this idea about being an anti-racist institution, you never arrive. Um, yeah. And it was this idea of competence and, and pretending like we're going to eliminate something versus the responsiveness and never tolerating it mm -hmm. uh, through passiveness as well mm -hmm. and being very clear. And, and I that really hit me as this charge to recognize that uh, we may never, well, we never will. And, uh, but our ability to respond is where we will be relentless. Um, this idea of thou shall not uh, comes down to thou shall not be passive in TPS around our work. We must engage. Um, and understanding that we are constantly changing, we are constantly hiring and, and being adaptive. And so, uh, I'm very excited uh, to support the team, um, and it will be the team that is leading this. Um, and I think what I hope you saw tonight is a very comprehensive approach to build an ecosystem to support our kids as well as our community and staff through what I would say is a total and some very functional and continuous next steps. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm excited. One of the things I wanted to say, too, is that you'll see, I just said this earlier, you'll see, I, I've done a lot of reading, and you'll see this big argument between do you get a equity czar in every district, you know, so you have one person that's in charge and they command it, and then, or do you do a team approach where everybody comes together and everybody has a part of it? And I am just so convinced that a czar is not the way to go <laughs> because they hardly ever have enough resources and they can't answer everybody's question. They can't keep up to, you know, all these different things. But if you have a committed team that comes together and they hold each other accountable and they're working on different facets of the work, I just think that that is the best way to get this work done. Josh has been so supportive of, you know, that team, even though, you know, and we even had some of our... Uh, researchers from other places are starting to say, well, maybe maybe this is a better way to do it. And uh, I think our results are going to show that. Fantastic. And I know I'm impressed with um, the ambitious timeline um, that you put forward. So love it. Um, and we we'll continue to push for that. Um, so questions from the, from the board members for anyone? I don't have any questions. I just have um, just um, an appreciation for um, in the um, personal develop or um, uh, DEI work that I do in my professional life, um, I think, and and I did a lot of this work with uh, a group of our counselors um, on inclusivity. The idea of um, accountability and capability at the same time um, is so important because if you don't, that's the inviting people. I mean, not you're not just calling people in, but inviting people in to participate and partake and grow alongside mm -hmm. rather than um, alienating and separating. And what I just know from my own work over uh, 10 or 15 years is that it's really through dialogue and conversation that we grow and understand ourselves, that then we can translate that into how we interact with others. So, um, and, and that's, I just, ha I heard that throughout every person that spoke, just that thread and integration of, you know, that accountability and capability, you know, holding people accountable and capable at the same time through practice, because that's the only way we get better is by practice. So I'm, 
extremely excited, particularly since where I started as a community partner with the district years and years ago. I just feel like I'm hearing the culmination of, of years of, of work. And um, so I'm, I'm just excited. Anyone else have a comment that they want to make? Right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, Dr. Leon, welcome back so. from, uh, from yeah. Peru. Thanks. Uh, is this on? It is. It doesn't light up. It doesn't up. light it just, up it, anymore? It's just on. Okay. <laughs> um, so I want to thank um, Superintendent, Assistant Superintendent, or, sorry, sorry, your Assistant Carla. Superintendent. Just Carla. Okay. <laughs> Carla. Carla, for all this hard work uh, and your team. Uh, Kelly, thank you very much. I think um, it's been going on for some time. Uh, I think that there are a few things I heard. I just want to um, kind of accentuate some of them. I think that we've heard already that this is a it's a broad uh, array of activities we have to you know get to. There's no hard to get to the final um, the finish line. It's a continuous work. There are deliverables, as you've mentioned many times, that you know we have a certain number of them. We're not trying to deliver everything all at once. Uh, the, Community at large needs to understand that, um, but, some, but it looks like we've already have a, a great start. Um, I think that this continuous manner that this is being done, you know, there's set dates for onboarding, August 15th, and then there's uh, other times that people will continue to touch and feel and learn uh, this cur curriculum, this way of being. I mean, this is something that I've heard someone say, you know, this is integrated into good teaching, I think you said. Carla, but it's really not just good teaching. It is good citizenship. It is personhood. I mean, it's something that should be in everyone's fiber at, at, many, at every level, right? From, from the young ones to old age. But we know that doesn't exist in the world. So it's a fight we have to continue to, you know, yes, invite them in, but sometimes people will have, will, will, will not want to come in, right? So we have to, um, require them to come in sometimes and say that this is something we're going to work together on, even if they disagree. Um, so I think that I appreciate the alignments with OSPI, as you said. Uh, so people say, why do I have to learn this? There's evidence there, and there's, there's you know, standards that they say why, why it's important. Um, culture's ever adapting, I think you said, Josh. So it is. And I think we're, we're hoping that it arcs in the side of justice, right? But we know that their force is working against that. So I just think it's important that we, we know that people are trying to go backwards into some things that are negative for society. So um, we have to just keep uh, fighting hard and working on this on this project. And that we'll come to this later. But you know we're we're, we're focusing on the on the anti-racist and the racism um, discrimination piece here. But really, this goes across all forms of discrimination. We all know that. Um, so sexual discrimination, religious, um, you know, sexual orientation. It, it, we have to cover it all, and our language needs to say that in, in our document, as we'll discuss in the next stage, in the next stages. I think we should include that right up front and center, too. So, um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, um, and now, actually, we really, I'm really grateful for you guys giving us this presentation because, as you know, we've been grappling as a board with our own <coughs> policies around anti-discrimination and um, also equity and anti-racism, which we actually don't have a, a designated policy on that. And so one of the things we're <coughs> wanting to talk about tonight was you know, kind of as a board, what are the policies that are going to actually help you operationalize this work and so um, thank you for the basic you know get, giving us a head 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 um, start on what you're already thinking and doing I think that'll play nicely into how we can um, support you in that work um, so moving on to item oh madam president would you mind if we uh, let our staff uh, absolutely take a moment to just transition real yes, quickly if you'd like yeah. to thank, thank you. you for your work guys thank That's you guys awesome. you're thank amazing you. So item 4.2 is the anti-racist school district policy recommendations. And as I said, this study session was really built as um, to look at the practical 
but also the policy that drives that practice. And so uh, we had a retreat on March 1st as, as a board, and we really started addressing some of the deeper issues um, and th th thinking and having conversations around racism and around um, discrimination and um, looking at what policies we did have in place and wondering how we could strengthen um, our perspective and and really give leading um, in a direction to the staff on, on their work around equity. So um, I want to call to your attention that we have uh, policy number 3111, which is our non-discrimination and equity policy. Uh, and it is, it was actually created uh, by the, uh, with the help of community um, partners, and including Vice President Keating, who was not on the board at the time, because this was back in, what, 2011 through 14 is kind of how it was growing. So um, thank you in advance. You must have been uh, just thinking ahead. I was just invited to just make table. Just making your life easier <laughs> for what, later in your life, day. right? Um, but... Uh, and in, in looking at this, one of the things we realized was that this is a really impressive document in terms of its statement around anti-discrimination and, and, um, and equity, and especially in the time that it was created. It was it's really sort of ahead of its time. Uh, but the language doesn't include all of the things that are, that are important to us now that we've brought up more recently. Um, and so uh, we wanted to talk about equity and anti-racism. Can I give just a little bit of context for sure. those that are oh, listening? For those that might not have yeah. been here, yes, go ahead. Um, for Please. our policy 3111, um, it was um, updated to align with a law that the legislature passed in 2006 um, to include um, anti-discrimination um, uh, anti protections for gender identity and sexual orientation. And so this was... Um, a requirement for districts across the state to um, incorporate their anti their non-discrimination policies to include those aspects. And back in 2011 and 12, when the there was a committee that was put together um, by that that um, actually um, Bernadette Ray was um, part of that, and as the assistant of student life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and so it, uh, just for context, like that work was being done because of um, an update to the law. And I, it was um, contentious and it was um, controversial. And we were one of the leading districts to take on this work at that time. So um, I was really proud to be a community member and a parent um, invited into that work. And it was hard. So. Um, so that's that's just a little bit of the historical context of that this policy, why, how this policy came to be as it is right now. Well, thank you, because I think that really provides a great foundation. So the objectives we have for tonight's conversation, and it's going to be an open conversation with, we're going to kind of do a round robin, three round robins, where we can everybody can make a comment, and then we can all comment on each other's following comments. And so I think it'll build on, the conversation will build on itself. But the three objectives, so keep this in mind as we're, as we're going through this process, the first one is that we'll review the, the actual 3111 non-discrimination equity policy and decide if it's we need to update it with anti-racist language or if a new standalone policy is a better approach on anti-racism. The second one will be we'll look at other school district policies to determine if any enhancements uh, should be made to our policy to strengthen you know, our commitment to anti-discrimination or anti-racism or equity in general. And then the third is to integrate the information that we just heard from our um, wonderful staff uh, who are putting together this work on the equity framework and how they're dis what we learned in this um, presentation, how can that inform um, how we adopt a, an anti-racist policy to improve student academic and social emotional learning. So with that in mind, um, I think just for simplicity's sake, you know, we can we can start over with uh, Director Leon, and just um, on the thoughts of, you know, we're going to focus right now on 3111, and making and just sort of talking about that as a policy, uh, the pros and cons if, if, uh, of adding in a a piece on anti-racism in here. If there's something that you saw in the examples that we provided um, from other school districts, things that you thought should be in here that aren't. Or whether, and what's your perspective on whether it, we, if we're going to put an anti-racist statement in here, should it be a separate policy, um, or uh, or 
what we have here in, in, integrated in this. Okay? Sure. Why don't you start? So, uh, I mean, I think the policy we have is good, uh, but I, I do think it needs either some, uh, some editing or, I mean, the, the question thing that I'd like to hear from the whole team on if we need a whole separate um, statement on anti-racism and anti-discrimination overall, unless we want to make our own on anti-racism, it, it feels like that is more powerful for our community or to have it as its own statement or if we can put it within this policy. I, I feel uh, like it could go either way. And I feel like at this point, um, there are a few things I think I would like to see added into this. Um, I'll just mention, I mean, there's, it's a big statement, but I, I'd like to read part of it. I think it's important for the audience to, to hear this one of the I mean, key pieces of it, that the district is committed to identifying, correcting practices and policies that preserve the achievement gap and institutional racism, gender discrimination in all its forms in order to provide all the students the opportunity to succeed. I think we've got the uh, racism part here, gender part here. I think there are other parts that we could include specific language on unless we want to say something to, effect, to the effect of dismantled discrimination in all of its forms. Although I think it, it's better just to be specific as to what those forms could be. Um, uh, and then there's parts here at, towards the end of that same sentence about opportunity to succeed in a manner compliant with all applicable state and federal laws. While we have currently in our state legislature, federal, I mean, and federal laws, I think, for the most part, uh, in our state that are good, that could change at any, po at any point if uh, the whims of, of voters and things like that. So I think that, I think when we could put a statement in there about when those laws are consistent with the full equity and anti-racist race practices and, you know, on. I just wouldn't want our policies to have to change if our legislature decided to, to adopt racist policies, you know, uh, for some reason. So I don't know if that's necessary, but that's a, a, a thought I have. Um, I think that uh, in this statement, we should consider a statement about our partner organizations. I, it may have been in there, may have missed it that push all partner organizations to share the same ideals. Um, and then uh, I think I liked some of the language, and I think it was in a couple of these, so the Atlanta board and the other example we have, get rid of the sec one of the second examples, have language around active interruption of systemic racism. I think it's mentioned also dismantling, so I think we should use both words, interruption and dismantlement of racism and the other forms of discrimination. I'll Thank you. There. That's good. Okay, so we... Um, President Fulbright? Yep. Question. Before... I know I'm last in this oh, we, circle, we, right? We, no, no, it's totally cool. I just want to make sure, like, so am I going on bullet number one right now, or what are we answering right now? Well, I think what we're looking at is especially bullet number one, because right. we want to look at, at the structural format that we are using. Is, you know, are we amending this? Or are we creating a difference thing for anti-racism merging? If you, the other pieces, uh, you know, the second one is about we'll get having a later. single and a separate one. Gotcha. So it's just sort of, they kind of merge together. Okay. And President Obama, I, I, from our conversations, I think uh, for those that are watching, we may not get to all the answers right. tonight. Correct. And so I think if we're focusing on that first one um, and giving ourselves a chance, I mean, this is a mm -hmm. uh, an iterative process. And then our, our general counsel yes. is, is here to guide us as well. And we might not get into uh, any of the wordsmithing because there's um, there's legal legalese. Um, that is a word. That is a word. <laughs> At least I'm making it up. So I think that first question might be the, the okay. one that the I'm focus on. Okay. Well, thank you for asking. Clarify. Had to make sure. All right, Director Strozier, would you like to go next? Uh, just real quick, as I shared at our retreat, um, <laughs> I think that when we get to talking about anti-racism and being an anti-racist school community, uh, it would benefit us most to be extremely explicit and specific about what we mean. So, uh, so when I think about 3111, you know, it was adopted in 2014. So either way we go, um, it would make sense to review and update, bring it into 2022. Um, when I think about the specific anti-racist policy, I, I'm kind of on the fence um, when it goes to either incorporating it into 3111 or standing alone. I think that the power lies in a standalone policy. Um, 
just because it gives it its own space and it solidifies our stance on where we are as a district as it relates to said uh, anti-racism. So that's where I am. Okay. Um, and and uh, I just want to expound on that thought because I've, I've had some conversations and some um, musings with others about this um, at the district. And I'm thinking one of the things that is that this one, this one, the non-discrimination 3111 is under students, which is the student category, which is a, obviously a subset and our most important component. But um, I would say that if we were going to do a standalone, that to put it in the zero category, which is the strategic planning one, which is overarching as an umbrella. Um, and actually, I think the non-discrimination and equity piece should also be either we can stay here, but we should mirror it in that bigger one as well. So it, there is no question about whether or not it applies to the staff or whether it applies to our pol other policies or implement, uh, how we implement things. So in answer to your piece, I would, and so I don't know if it would be a separate or whatever, but I think it should be in zero, zero, zero instead of the 36, um, instead of the 31, 30,000 uh, for that reason, because it's more overarching. Um, and anyway, I'll, Director Keating? Yeah, and I, I think from our board retreat was really, I was similarly where you were, Corey, about like I could see this going either way. And as Elizabeth and I worked and prepared for tonight and worked with Carla as well, I, um, and through conversations, I just feel more and more um, confident that having a standalone policy, um, in my opinion, I, I, I would, I see that in the strategic plan um, or in the zero, zero, category, in my mind, embeds it in, in institutionalizes and listen and listening to what was shared tonight in all of the different categories and ways of mm -hmm. integrating of the integration of practice mm -hmm. to me, like beyond whoever is sitting in these seats in the future, I would want us to intentionally and thoughtfully um, create a policy that that does help embed the practices that are being developed um, systemically throughout. And so it is a way of being as a district. Um, so I, I've just come farther along believing that it. I've, I would like to see a standalone policy. And I just want to, um, I'm not sure if I heard you correctly, Enrique, I, um, but I thought I heard you say that there were federal protections. And I want to say that there's no federal protections for um, gender identity and sexual orientation. There are only um, 21 states in the country that have specific um, uh, anti-discrimination protections for gender identity and so sexual orientation. Um, and we are one of those states. Okay. Um, thank you. I feel that I have strong opinions on this topic. Um, I feel it's very personal to me. Um, my grandparents were born on a plantation. My father integrated schools here in Tacoma. My stepfather was a bus student who integrated schools in Tacoma. My mother integrated Wainwright. I feel that if we do not have a standalone anti-racist policy, it negates the fact that anti-racism is not the same as equity. And I feel that things become palatable over time. Mm -hmm. There was a time in this country where women couldn't work in a corporate office. That's disgusting. That was the thought, right? There was a time in this country where black students couldn't go to school with white students. That was the thought. So it's like when we, when we kind of negate that and we're like, okay, well, let's focus on equity because it's palatable, because it makes everyone comfortable. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about racism. We're not talking about homophobia. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about sexism. So I feel that the 3111, the non-discrimination policy, it accomplishes what it set out to do. And it's doing a good job of that. However, there's this other lens that we are not talking about because we don't have a policy to support it. We have students, parents, staff, and administrators who feel that they are being equitable and who feel that they are being anti-racist, but there's not a policy to support that line of thinking or that line of work. So when a parent comes to a district and says, I'm having this specific policy or this specific problem, yeah. 3111 is saying, well, we were being equitable, but a principal can say, okay, but were we being anti-racist? Mm -hmm. And so what? Are, how are we gonna um, support our students, our staff, our administrators, and the community at whole as a large if we do not have a standalone policy. I also agree that it should be in the zero series, not the 3000 series, as it is overarching. And um, when Carla, when you were holding up those cards and it was saying, 
you know, we are going to be equitable and like, that is so palatable and it's so powerful. But what if on that same card said, I'm going to be anti-racist today. I'm going to walk into this minority majority district and be an anti-racist. I think it's really important. We are 65% minority. I've said it since I got here. And the reason I keep bringing it up is because of this type of work. And when we have this many minority students, we cannot walk the line of just being equitable. It comes, it, it starts to become tolerant as opposed to actually doing the work. So I feel strongly about this and I didn't want to say all that, but I said it. So no, it's, it's out there now. And I think we need a standalone policy. Perfect. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, and so uh, before we go around again to sort of comment on what we said that last time, I want you to think about adding in um, maybe a little bit more definitively. Would you be, you know, a couple of people have said that they sort of, well, one said leaning, the other said definitely on the standalone. So let's get some, some a little bit more a sense of how everybody else is on that one. But also, um, you know, I think one of the things we have and what we could also do is even if we do a standalone policy, I think we need to update this policy with anti-racism language as well, but, you know, also have maybe a statement or, or a policy that's specific on anti-racism, because I think we need to embed it in everywhere that's appropriate. Madam President, can I ask a clarifying question? Uh, Ms. Trublet, we are required to have non-discrimination policies that's as right. well. Right. Right. So I just, that's I correct. think I want to just ask that because... I don't want us to think we're about not eliminating this. Right. No, right. And no, so, no, nobody wants to do that. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. So I just want to check that. It doesn't mean that we can't yes. do everything that was said, but we do have to have something with very specific language for discrimination. Yes, and we do have a uh, yeah. non discrimination of students policy. Yeah. And then we also have a non-discrimination of staff policy as well. And I was going to mention that earlier. It's, there's a 5,000 series a piece yes. of non-discrimination, but that's what's legally required for him as an employer. Mm -hmm. And this is more of what do we what do we believe? Absolutely. Right. So I just want to add that. For and this context. is not going anywhere, right? Yeah. So making modifications and adjustments, mm -hmm. but th that there is some limitations in the sense of we do have to have some of these pieces in a policy and I'm checking because it is required. So we wouldn't ever replace our non-discrimination policy. Right. We would adapt it. And then what you're exactly. hearing is, is there may also, be a, another yeah, yeah. and. And so that's what I want to get some clarity from everybody else that <laughs> came <laughs> after. And then the other thing, well, in the next round, if you could also speak to, and I, you started to do it, Enrique, but then we kind of got off, I think no one else did, was to look at the policies we were given. And if there are things in here that you think um, and Corey, you mentioned definitions. So I think that's that's one of the things that we we know we you know does everybody say because nobody else mentioned that. So I'm just saying let's as you go around think of what your colleague said before you that you want to you know kind of um, ag agree with or raise up or you know uh, ask for pause on or whatever. So going back to Enrique, if you want to talk a little bit about um, how you feel about a separate, you, you mentioned it, but. After hearing the conversation, would you, you know, how would you feel about a separate policy? And then also, um, what specific thoughts do you have on uh, some of the examples that were given, if you had any? Yeah, so I agree. With a separate policy, I think, is a good idea for the reasons you've mentioned. Uh, I think that, you know, a concise, powerful statement um, to make it effectively crystal clear to the community and all staff, students, and I think, you know, community, I think we're thinking about parents and partners too, as we as we have this non-discrimination policy that you mentioned um, uh, with regards to students, staff, probably should have pertained to people that set foot on our campus, like parents. So, anyway. And I, I, the other comments are already made, so I won't repeat them. Okay. Thank you. So, Corey, do you have any? Yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just lock in with the, hey, we need a whole new policy for anti-racism. Um, and, and, and then I'll just share what I said in my email to you mm -hmm. uh, specifically was um, we, we should at least at minimum address anti-racism through our you know school environment, incident handling and reporting, staffing, program funding and access, um, as well as providing very clear definitions of, of anti-racism and what it means to be an anti-racist school community. But I think before we get there, we have to uh, have a conversation about 
what everybody thinks this means, because I can guarantee you everyone here has a different right. definition of anti-racism. Yeah, we're, as as uh, the superintendent said, we are not going to get to a bottom of an answer to <laughs> well, Yeah, I didn't but, mean to not. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I do think that, it, okay. So, yeah. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Um, and I guess I would I would say that I am yes also on, on an anti, a specific anti-racist policy. And then I also, as I said earlier, would love to have anti-racism as a term that we will define in that section embedded in, in this policy as well, um, because I think it's missing. So, um, and then I think as examples, I would, I would like to, you know, the, the one from New, uh, North Carolina, from Albemarle, which is the one you shared at the retreat, um, Corey, is they use the definitions adopted by the, um, the Government Alliance on Race and Equity, which is a nationally recognized and respected organization. And I think they're super clear. They might not be complete for everyone, but just as a place to begin, that might be a, a place. So I'm mentioning that because I think when we get to next steps, um, General Counsel, um, <laughs> that we are probably going to be looking to you and staff to um, you know, help us maybe come up with some language. I'm just pointing this out when we not pro not probably not okay, not probably. We yes, are. please. Yeah. We are please. But um, because we want to do excited. it right the first time. So anyway, so so um, just was mentioning that this was something that I think I saw some heads nodding might be great language to start with. Can I back up real quick? Yes, um, go. Because I was speaking to uh, Vice President Keating on one of my drives, and uh, we were talking about how we are um, in a good spot because we aren't responding to anything yes and then the next board meeting we respond to two things yep not respond to two things but we hear from two parents um where i feel like if we had uh this policy in play in place already you know we would have you know make it a little bit easier to respond to it um so i just say that to say uh, i'm glad that we have time but we ain't got all the time in the world oh yeah we're gonna, um, so we're i know that i'm just gonna say that i yeah, appreciate everyone's i want to appreciate everyone's efforts uh around you know kind of putting the pedal to the metal on this one just because we said that and then i got here to the board meeting and then boom yep so anyway. now that's because karma is coming after yeah, us <laughs> okay so uh director keating vice president keating um yeah what i i would just add to the um around a purpose statement. Um, I know Elizabeth, you and I have talked about this quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And Carla, when we met on Monday, like the little card sample, mm -hmm. like aligning um, the uh, whatever the purpose statement in an anti-racist policy, that it would align with the similar language with like the, I don't, what are you calling that? A, a card? Like, commitment. Commitment? Okay. Um, so that it again is is integrated and embedded and, and institutionalized in who we are and how we are. And then I, you know, I know we talked about, I, I feel like I've talked about this with most of you about def agreed definitions mm -hmm. um, and, and being clear, like what is not, uh, agreed definitions and also what specifically are we looking to define? I think like having, being um, clear on those pieces um, I feel, I, just echoing off of that, I feel that often the word racism and racist feels very individual. It feels very accusatory and it can be painful when it's thrown at you, no matter what race you are. And I just want to start by saying that because having a policy that even includes the word racism, it's going to strike people in the heart in a way, it, it, it will, it just is going to do that. And with that knowledge, it's saying, what, what are we defining? We're defining systems of racism and how we can enact and combat systems um, because we are a system. We are a school district. That's a freaking system. It's a big one at that. Um, so with the, the objective of pointing out um, other schools that did something right or something that you're leaning into that you really appreciate, the Ben Lapine schools in Oregon, um, they had a statement on school culture adopt and support consistent implementation across classrooms, schools, and the district of proactive and positive practices. And then you can go into the ABC of that, but it's just kind of, it's defining the system as opposed to being very individual, individual um, pointing anything out. And it's pointing out that as a system, we can do this better and we can do this in that way. And I think when we're making those definitions, we have to be really clear about systems as opposed to um, staff, students, parents, community feeling attacked by a policy when the policy's purpose is to redefine a system or to create a better system. That's already pretty great. We're doing we're doing the work. I loved our equity presentation and that proves that we're on the right path and like how can we 
keep that path going even more progressively forward to support the students of our current system. Cool. I yeah, that. what you said. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This is my jam. Yeah, I can tell, I can tell you are one. awake tonight. I You're love welcome. it. Um, okay, so uh, I think we got to a place that we're, we're pretty much thinking we'd like to have a separate anti-racist policy and then incorporate that same language into the non-discrimination equity. I think maybe we'll turn to the superintendent and the general counsel and the superintendent on special assignment about where that should, you know, I, we're all pitching for the zero zero, but where the non-description, where, where all of this would go. So maybe we can take that and have a chance to process that and Please. bring you back some recommendations. I really yeah. appreciated your comments around, um, we have, we are a system of, of human beings. Yep. And so this idea of what are the system pieces that this policy addresses, right? Not everyone in that um, um, works in the Tacoma Public Schools is racist, Correct. right? Um, it doesn't mean, and sometimes we have these moments where they're unintentional, but they can feel that way, and mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. One of the things that, that I would think we might want to wrestle too is, is um, the intent of when this is revisited. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, we were here in 2014, and um, it built on the work that you said, and what they, the board at that time used the language that was relevant during that time. Right, and exactly. So, uh, we'll probably also be trying to think about, like, when does a board have to require to revisit this to make sure the language is reflective of the times? And so I don't know that, um, but if you'll give us a little bit of grace, we can probably walk through and think about process recommendations and some next steps to bring back to you. Right, and um, okay, and thank you. Um, and so I guess I was wondering if folks need to think we need to go through it again, or is there, are there other things to, because we talked about that one, we got, got some agreement on that. Uh, we talked about some other examples. And feel free to continue to send all of us, including the um, uh, general counsel, uh, any new thoughts or ideas. Thanks for sending who, uh, the new ones that came in. Thank you for those. And then the last item that we <clears throat> that we were thinking about talking about was the uh, that we were asked, I asked you to talk about was how we're incorporating what we heard from um, uh, Carla and the team about what their work is and to sort of take a second and um, remember what you heard this, this evening and sort of throw, weave that into uh, setting the policy and the strategic plan for the district. How do you see this approach we're taking? And I think, Lisa, uh, you actually touched a bit when you talked about the action statement that, that you know, we're talking about putting the cards together, integrating that into the policy because I think, so any other ideas like that, things you heard earlier that you think we maybe should add to the policy because we want to reinforce it and make sure it continues into the future. So we'll just do a quick round on that and, um, and then we'll talk next steps. Does that sound good? So, and if there's anything else on this last round that you felt like you didn't say before that you want to say, feel free to do that. But before we do, I think I'll let um, General Counsel, um, you know, just put in your two cents on what this whole process is. And that way, if you have something you want us to think about for the last round, we can. Uh, I'm just excited because the policy work uh, that I get to help support you with and support all of our students and community uh, is really meaningful, and uh, so I, I appreciate this opportunity. I took really good notes, and thank goodness this is recorded so that I can go back and listen again and make sure that I caught your intent. But I think our next steps are, uh, like Superintendent Garcia said, um, for us to figure out the best way to come back to move toward action. Um, you know, as we uh, develop policies, we usually put them on uh, the board agenda for a first reading, uh, and then we go to our equity policy review team, and then we bring a second reading. So what I'm hearing is, is that we want to get to uh, revising 3111, determining the best place for it, and then also have a standalone policy for anti-racism. And I'd say, I think when, I think it's a little farther down than, than just that. I think we probably will have, want to have another study session on this because uh, I think, you know, we haven't gotten all the answers. But yes, once we, once we get to the, okay, this is what we want, then we'd go through the equity policy review and the, and the cabinet and, you know, all of the principles and all of that process that we yes. usually do. Okay, I have so. a question. So, because Elizabeth, you brought up the um, non-discrimination policy for staff as well. So, I'm wondering if doing the the student and staff policy, having both of those go through the review process for updating, or 
I'm just curious about that aspect. Yeah, and as uh, Superintendent Garcia was mentioning earlier, those two policies have been pretty recently updated and um, to comply with Washington law and OSPI has a very, very strict framework. I think as we go through the work, we might want to look at them to see, again, one of the things I love about our board is that we don't just adopt the WASDA model policies, we make it specific to Tacoma and, and their needs. So um, we can look at that as well. Um, but um, I think that um, we also don't want to take on too much at once. So um, I was just curious since yeah. it had been brought up and yeah. so just surfacing yeah. that. Yeah. So one thing for us just even to pause is to recognize that uh, so much is around language. We use the terms mm -hmm. and we haven't unpacked the terms. And mm -hmm. so I think uh, before we can even get to updates, <coughs> Yeah. And there, there's some work that needs to be urgently done where we need to galvanize it so we can bring some of this right. back. And then and in May, yeah. you know, there's a we need another work study to wrestle through what do you folks mean? Because we can't update language that's not what you're thinking about over here. And, and you know, as I continue to learn is, this, you know, policy is cascading. Right. Mm -hmm. And so even the work tonight is relevant. But it's not policy work. It's more of how we're doing right in, this, in there. And so um, I would just, if you're willing to, we could we could pause and, and get that scheduled in May and, and wrestle through some of these terms more so that you're more, I think, uh, grounded. And I think, uh, Corey, you mentioned this idea of we're not all may not all be aligned in these specific terms. Right. And, Great. Okay, well, let's quickly go around one more time. And thank you, um, Renee, for that. I, I think it's very exciting work. Um, so we will, one more time, if there's anything you wanted to add or uh, if you wanted to incorporate some things that you heard tonight that maybe, you know, making sure that our policy gives whatever support and direction to the work that's being done on the equity network. Sure. So uh, just to clarify, I think, uh, you know, may have misunderstood what I said about the state and federal laws are competing that I don't, the, the language in our current statement is manner compliant with state and federal laws. So, and I didn't know what you were reading from, so. Yeah. That, that's our current policy, yeah. Got it. So Because yeah, these are the legally combined. Sure, yeah. sure. So I don't want us to be tied in to manners compliant with what the federal government and the state government says if they're working in a negative way, in a backwards way. Totally. Towards what we think is right for our students. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to go beyond that. So, uh, so yes. expanding on that would be, would be a, yeah, you know, we can unpack this a little more, but we are required yes. to follow laws. Yes. We take an oath of office as a school district right. board of electives to follow those. And so we can talk okay. through that at another time of how we would advocate, how we would try to influence at that time. But um, we are required to follow state and federal laws. Right. But if, and if I was law just doesn't clarifying. go far enough, doesn't go far enough, we can go further into protecting people's rights in our district. Correct. We Correct. can unpack that more. I just want to be yeah. clarifying that I, there's multiple aspects of this, but I, I wouldn't want our community to hear that sure. we are not going to follow state and federal. That's laws. not what I'm trying to say. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, and the second I mentioned already, but I think. Uh, some language around partner organizations and confirming that they abide strictly by what we believe in. Otherwise, we shouldn't work with them <laughs> or find a substitute that will that will will do the work in a in a positive manner. Thanks, Corey. I'm sorry, uh, I just read you. Good. You good? That that is my name, indeed. Yeah, it uh, is. I was just going to say, uh, just just shoot some appreciation over to Carla and everybody who worked on yeah. on on the presentation earlier. And one thing that stood out is just the approach when we start to do something as, as powerful as equity work, anti-racist work, uh, non-discrimination work, that we go into it with the idea of how do we get this in place to reach from top to or from from full left to right. I don't want to say top to bottom, but Thank from you. from, you know, from here at CAB to every school building, mm -hmm. um, taking that approach makes it actually easier. Um, I've been in situations where folks make decisions from the top down and it doesn't work out mm -hmm. the way that they think it's going to work. But when you bring people along, um, that's how you make the most progress. So I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate just how do we go into this reaching from full left side to the right side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Vice President Keating. Uh, I feel like I kind of said like earlier, um, just seeing the evolution um, and, and is... Um, 
really, um, it's very hopeful and inspiring. And I know there's not like an end point and people bring, people grow as they practice in this work. And I feel like what we heard tonight, um, that's the, that's where this, the core of the, um, planning for implementation is to create a practice of, um, equity and anti-racism and disrupting bias in. And I think um, my my hope is that um, whatever policy that, you know, we do end up um, crafting and creating and, and deciding on um, helps to institutionalize this work long after um, any of us are sitting here. Yeah. Um, I will also, again, thank you to the the team who put together the presentation earlier, I did like the approach without an equity czar and bringing all people in from different lines of work within the district to come together and work on that equity framework. Um, two of the policies that we had that we could you know, bounce ideas off, they were equity and anti-racism, and then one was just a standalone anti-racism. I think that um, being an anti-racist institution goes hand in hand with being an equitable institution. And so if we kind of mirror the approach we took to equity and take that same approach to anti-racism and see how we can weave it in, but by including those leadership voices and hopefully having an awesome project manager like you have for the equity team, um, I think will really help. Um, and when this work does come out, it has to be top down. So you had principals who were in the work the whole process through with the equity and I think um, with the equity review and implementation I think the same would have to be for anti-racism because if your leader doesn't believe I have to be an or I have to lead an anti-racist institution then how can those who follow under and then those teacher leaders so that whole approach of everybody being involved in the process and everybody understanding the why of the process like Josh said there's going to have to be some wordsmithing and understanding so that we're all on the same page so that anybody walking into any school can know that this is what being an anti-racist institution for Tacoma looks like. So it doesn't matter if you're a substitute principal, a custodian, a para, or our new names for them, um, <laughs> you know, or a certificated staff, or even a school board director. If I walk in, I already understand because of the wordsmithing and because all these different people are involved the whole way through. So when we're pushing it out, it's easier for everyone to digest because there's people, there's peers, we're side by side in this work, we're understanding the work. And I feel like here I'm with my peers, we're side by side and I hope the principals will be side by side and those leader teachers are side by side and the cab instructors and the administrators are side by side in the work so that way the rollout can be smooth and it can be easily understandable. It may not be palatable, but at least if we can understand it, we can do positive work for Tacoma. Thank you, team. This has been a wonderful conversation. Okay, just a quick roundup on next steps. Is that, uh, no, I love it. Uh, is that uh, we're looking at holding, um, just, you know, putting up a, a hold on the, um, for a study session in May and see how far we get. We may not get it done in time, but I just want to make sure that we have a hold so we're planning on that so we don't get too far down the ride road. And we'll look to, to you, um, uh, general counsel and superintendent to, you know, and, and both superintendents to you know help us um, with some language and some framework that you think might work and um, and then we'll take it from there and just start thinking about terminology and definitions and I really appreciate um, the honesty and uh, com and kind of willingness for everyone on this board to dive deep into this work. It's not easy work um, and and it's critical work and um, so I just want to thank you all. And uh, so, uh, does anybody have any last minute, I mean, last comments for the good of the order? I mean, does that mean that we've got Carla for another study session? She said she was done, but. Well, she's not done. She's it seems not like done. you she's not done until June 30th. Oh, okay. It feels really good to be at the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she, she wants in for this. Oh. All right. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>